whenever we describe cultural region, we absolutely have to think about this whole core domain sphere idea. And once again, core domain sphere, I didn't come up with the names, but it's definitely, we think about, you know, talking like a geographer, when we refer to regions, that's just how we talk. Uh, so we have those core areas, those dominated areas, where that cultural form is the most present. But as you go away from that core area, it definitely starts to diminish and fade away. So let's look at some examples, some specific examples of cultural regions. So if we're going to look at cultural regions, and why not, let's look at popular culture, since obviously it's popular, it's obviously well known, so hopefully we can all relate to these different examples. And so what they have here is the Facebook fan map. What they did is they essentially tallied up all throughout the country, all the people who like a certain uh, football team, their, their page on uh, Facebook, and then they find out where they live, and they made a map. So think about, you know, once again, GIS, computer mapping. You know, this would have been impossible to do, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Find out all throughout the country and give a percentage uh, of, of all the various, uh, you know, fan uh, regions uh, of, of different NFL teams throughout the country. It'd be impossible. Now it's very easy to do. So this is the Facebook fan map. Uh, so here they, what they did was they then identified different cultural regions, let's say. So what we can do is we can use these cultural region maps, these fan region maps, to essentially identify the core areas. The core areas are just going to be whatever city they're located in. That's going to be the core area. But then these also, what they do is they show the domains. And so the Colts, we look at the Colts uh, domain is for the most part all of Indiana. We can see, you know, the biggest domain would be the Broncos. Why? That's a very lightly populated area. And if you look at the market area for the Broncos, uh, there isn't another team anywhere really near them. And so because of that, they have a big... Uh, fan region. So it's not just because of Peyton. Uh, so also what we got is we got different size regions and we'll come back and explain this later uh, in the text. We'll look at uh, different in uh, a future chapter, try to explain well why are the, in big urban areas, why are they real small, but then when you get out in rural areas they're really really big. So like I said this is a cultural fan, a cultural region map that shows the core which is this, wherever the city of this certain team is located and the domain which is whatever color it's shown here. And the Facebook map shows that if we zoom into uh, to the Colts, to the Midwest, uh, you'll find that for the most part all of Indiana are Colts fans. The only exception is, of course, as you get closer to uh, Chicago. What's fascinating, though, also is the role of borders. Uh, and so you see the Illinois border, for the most part, separates Bears and Colts fans, just like the Ohio border, for the most part, separates Bengals and Colts fans. But of course, there is some, there is some overlap. Now you look at a state like Kentucky, which is definitely kind of in the middle of the Rams area, middle of the Cincinnati, Colts, now the Titans. And so for Kentucky, they're very much in the transition zone, which explains why there are all kinds of colors there. Uh, but, you know, another reason why Colts uh, are also more popular there in Kentucky is they're uh, crazy about horses. Um, so another you know, kind of characteristic there as well, Colts obviously as a reference to horses. So what we have here is if we zoom in, we can see different fan regions. I also like how the you know, Chicago Bears and Green Bay Packers, it pretty much stops there at the state line. But Kentucky, very similar to Iowa, in which it's kind of a transition. It's kind of an area that doesn't have a, a, a team in their state, but it's got you know some proximity to other, uh, other uh, core, uh, core areas, core fan uh, regions. Of course, now Twitter, they got in the game too, and so they made a map, a similar map, the Twitter map. Uh, and so here, we can, you know, what they did was at least they put in the core areas now. So now we can really see those core areas, and each of those core areas are, uh, the, you know, the, the, the NFL team, the text there, and the little place mark that shows them. So this is another way to showcase core uh, dom and domain of different fan regions. And finally, to put the bed, the whole cultural region, when we look at Colts fan region, I would argue this blue area represents the core area. And so Indianapolis, definitely Marion County, obviously where the team is located. But if you look at the fan base, the people who are most likely to go to, to, to the football games, most likely to have season tickets, it's going to be all of those in those blue surrounding counties. For example, in Boone County, 54% of Boone County residents, which is the highest in the state for any county, uh, are Colts fans. Similarly, Hendricks County, Hamilton County, Johnson County, Hancock County are all in the 53-52%. So the highest percentage of Colts fans found anywhere in any county are those particular surrounding counties. Where do we not find Colts fans? Definitely in those orange counties at the top. Uh, there in, in uh, those, those lake counties, uh, Laporte, only 10% uh, of, of, of Laporte residents in, are, are uh, Colts fans. In Porter County, 
only 8% in Lake County, only 5%. Similarly, uh, 43% of those uh, in Laporte are Bears fans, 38% in Porter are, are Bears fans, and then 36% in Lake County. Similarly, we look at Cincinnati at the bottom right. Those are also where you're going to have larger Bengal fan percentages. And more recently, Twitter has come out with their basketball map uh, that shows followers based on different teams. And so we, what I did here was I compare Pacers versus the Bulls and the Pacers. Very, very high concentration in Indiana. Uh, so we look at the Pacers compared to the Bulls. Bulls are much more spread out. Uh, so uh, you know, much more dispersed pattern uh, when we look at Bulls fans. They're pretty much found everywhere when we compare them to Pacers fans, which are much more clustered, higher concentration there in Indiana, where Bulls fans are much more popular nationally. And just playing around, I came up with this my own cultural region map of, of fan regions of different teams, uh, so different sports teams. And yeah, I left out IPY, but we really don't have much of a sport legacy here. We don't really have a large fan base. A lot of that's because we're a commuter school, but also because we're newer compared to the other schools. So this is just a rough kind of me trying to showcase where different fan regions are, are found in the state. Real quickly, I'm going to further emphasize core and domain by looking at different cultural characteristics, different cultural forms. First off, the Mormon faith. I've already identified this, but the core of the Mormon faith, Salt Lake City. It's where you're going to find the, uh, the, the key church, uh, the key members uh, of the Mormon faith. But if you look at the Mormon faith is spread out throughout all of Utah and in filters into neighboring states. But the sphere of the Mormon uh, religion, pretty much anywhere in the country, you find a lot of them, Latter-day Saints or Mormons here in Indiana. So it's got a core domain that I've identified here, but the sphere, for the most part, the rest of the United States. Now this is a map showcasing the core of skateboarding. Skateboarding culture is very, very passionate, very, very uh, evident there in extreme southern uh, California, Los Angeles in particular. But you look at you know X Games culture, you look at skateboarding, it's it's definitely found all throughout the coast. And so I went to Seattle uh, a couple years ago, and boy, everyone there is on skateboards or bikes. Uh, and so a lot of skateboarders there, and so it's very much a Western thing. You don't really see a large number of skateboarders uh, in Indiana. You might see them at a skate park in a suburban area or in an urban area downtown, but for the most part, it is a Western coast, in particular Southern California thing. Bluegrass music. If you don't know bluegrass music, just Google it. Uh, but bluegrass music, it's cultural traits. Uh, every bluegrass band has to have five, uh, five key elements, five key uh, instruments. The acoustic guitar or rhythm guitar, uh, the upright bass, the mandolin, the fiddle, which is uh, fiddle is uh, uh, like a violin, think of it as violin, and the banjo. So that's the kind of the cultural traits, the cultural form of bluegrass music. But where we find its core, its core there is in East Tennessee, Eastern Kentucky, Western North Carolina. Those are where you're going to find the most number of bluegrass uh, uh, musicians, but also fans. Actually, the origins of bluegrass music is from uh, Af actually African slave culture uh, in, the, in the Western Carolina area. Uh, so it's actually the origins of bluegrass music. But if you look at Indiana, uh, you look at Southern Ohio. Indiana, we've got bluegrass radio stations. In fact, there's one I listen to all the time because I like bluegrass music, and it's found in the southern part of the state, down in New Albany. And so here's an example of a core and domain. But once you get to, you know, for example, Western Tennessee, it becomes more blues, becomes more traditional country. Uh, but bluegrass, particularly in rural, uh, this rural area of the country, quite isolated, you find it in much higher uh, percentages. Next up, what they've called the Dirty South, and so this is African American music in particular in, from the urban areas uh, of the American South. So this is, for example, Master P, Lil Wayne, uh, and so these are probably guys that are all been dated, probably all old, maybe don't know them, uh, but it's just diff you know, different type of, 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 of rap music that comes from this area, a little bit more jazzy, a little bit more drums, a little bit more cymbals, a little bit more of a, uh, of, of a, kind of a, a jazzy uh, beat to them compared to other areas which is a little bit more hardcore, a little bit less of that. Uh, and so here we see this particular area called the Dirty South. I didn't come up with a name, but its core would be the urban areas in the South, in particular Atlanta and New Orleans, throw in maybe Memphis, but also the, pretty much the all other areas we see large numbers of African Americans in the South. 
Next up, Tejano music or Tex-Mex music has its core. It's you know definitely its its origins there in South Central Texas, i.e. Tex-Mex. So you can see how it's kind of a fusion already. But there in San Antonio in particular, but all throughout much of uh, much of the American South, you're going to find Tejano or Tex-Mex music. Key key characteristics, key traits. It kind of fuses together some Mexican elements, uh, some Mes Mexican music, Spanish origins with some more American folky uh, type of instruments, for example, the rhythm guitar, uh, accordion, and so Tex-Mex is a fusion, and it's very popular in this particular area of the country, although you're going to find Tex-Mex or Tejano music all throughout the country, especially where you're going to find Latin Americans. So in Chicago, where there's a ton of Mexican immigrants, you're going to find a large Tejano music base there, and so its sphere, you could argue, uh, extends all the way up to Chicago. Another type of music called go-go -go music, very, very focused, very, very small uh, uh, cultural region. Go-go -go music is a type you really find only in Washington, D.C. and the surrounding uh, Maryland and Virginia uh, areas. And what it is, is it's a, kind of a hip-hop, kind of a fusion of funk. Uh, it's definitely more percussion-based. But The key thing here is it has congos. Uh, it has a particular uh, arrangement. And so it's a very, very upbeat, kind of something you find more in dance halls. A lot of call and response with the uh, the singers singing, and then the crowd following along with a certain line or, or echoing whatever uh, the uh, person singing called out. Um, so this is a particular form of music that's only found in one particular area of the country, uh, and it's definitely core there is in Washington D.C. And our final cultural region we're going to look at is the NASCAR cultural region, which I've identified as its core is definitely Charlotte, North Carolina. That's where you find all the teams located. That's where you're going to find the people that are most hardcore uh, about the sport found, biggest fans. So we're going to see a lot of you know, NASCAR journalists uh, clustered. So essentially it's the core of NASCAR. But you're going to find NASCAR is quite popular all throughout the American South, but also the rural Midwest. Indianapolis is one of the top markets for NASCAR races. Even though we're not there in the American South, we're very much race fans, but we're also, you know, we're kind of Southern in a way. I mean, we're not too far from Kentucky in the South, uh, but you also find rural Iowa. They're mad for NASCAR. Uh, they're just, they really like their uh, auto racing out there. And so this kind of makes sense why you find the core and domain for NASCAR to be quite big. But NASCAR sphere, it's pretty much all throughout the country, except maybe urban areas. You could say big cities, New York, L.A., uh, Pacific Northwest are key areas where you could say you know NASCAR really isn't super popular.